What's going on, YouTubers? Luis here. So I wanted to take a break from talking about motor clubs. You know, it gets a little tiring, a little exhausting, uh, bashing these clubs and stuff. So this video, I wanted to touch base on, on some equipment, uh, equipment that I use, commonly use. And that piece of equipment is going to be a round sling, also known as continuous loop. Uh, this is synthetic. I know many of you have seen these. Now, this is my go-to for a lot of things, especially recovery work. I like the simplicity behind it. I like how light it is compared to a chain. It's easy on the hands, it's easy on the back. Um, it's also very cheap to replace. You know, this is a six foot sling here. It's probably like 25 bucks if I recall. I tend to keep these in stock. I'm going to keep probably half a dozen on the shelf of, of different lengths, different colors. And uh, I keep several different sets in the trucks as well. I try to keep two of each, you know, two six-footers, two ten-footers, two green ones, two yellow ones, um, just because you never know when you're going to need them. In addition to that, if you're using these, you got to make sure, too, that you are also using shackles. These are really not designed to be... At the end of a hook just because under extreme pressure and over time you could develop a, a slit and you know could have a catastrophic failure so uh reason why i like these two is i'm a big when it comes to recovery work you know if i got something down an embankment or in a ditch i like to grab my vehicles by the wheel as opposed to grabbing them by suspension components. The reason being is when you grab them by the wheel, you don't have to worry about damaging anything under the under the car and the undercarriage. Um, I used to, you know, when I first started in the business, I would go straight for the control arm. That's because back then I was using more chains than anything. The problem with that is you can't really see what's going on when you uh, when you got it hooked to your wire rope and you're there winching it out. You can't see if uh, if it's hitting a tie rod, you know, if it's uh, if it's on an ABS uh, sensor harness or anything like that. So I'm a big fan of just grabbing through the wheel. The other good thing about grabbing stuff through the wheel is you don't have to get on your back. You don't have to get all dirty, especially if you're dealing dealing in snow or mud. It's just easier to just snake it through the wheel. You know, use a choker, use a basket, whatever you want to use to get it out. Now, the other nice thing too about these slings is they're not like chains when these are meant to be decommissioned or taken out of service they'll they'll tear you know but they've got red threads in them and once the red threads are exposed that's time to throw the thing in the garbage that's nice chains aren't like that i mean you don't really know if a chain is stretched or it's been abused it's been abused unless you have a chain gauge most of us don't. I know I don't unless you're DOT. And that's the only way to really see if a chain has been, you know, it has exceeded its work and load limits and it's time to retire it. So that's the nice thing about this, that this is pretty dummy proof that the moment you start seeing the, the, re the red threads, it's time to chuck the thing in the garbage. Now, like I said, these things are also very, very, very affordable. There's no reason why, you know, you, you shouldn't have a few of these in stock, you know, where chains, especially when you're dealing with grade 80, grade 100 chains, those can get very, very pricey. You know, I just bought some 12 foot chains and they were like $350 a piece for grade 100s. Uh, so this is, this is a cheaper alternative, but don't get me wrong. Chains have their time and their place. If I'm dealing with a casualty that's got sharp edges, that's completely mangled, I'm going to pull the chains out. But for the most part, I usually use these. Just because I said I like using them, I feel it's a little bit easier. So on the second part of this video, I'm going to show some, uh, some tips and tricks on how I use these and why I like using them and explain the different methods of using these, whether you're using it as a vertically or as a choker or a basket and how it affects the work and load limits depending on how you use it. So I'll talk about that on the second half of this video. Okay, so like I was saying before, I'm a big fan of uh, grabbing vehicles and stuff by the wheel. 
most cars these days they are coming with aluminum wheels and you usually can get right in between the spokes now a lot of you are going to say oh you know it's it, you shouldn't grab it by the wheel this that you know it's going to damage this it's going to pull this out of alignment just so you know that when this vehicle is going down the highway at 70 miles an hour and it hits a pothole the force that is behind that is astronomical so much more than a controlled pull if we were pulling this out of a ditch so there's nothing wrong with grabbing a wheel by you know a grabbing a car by the wheel it, it's it, it happens day in and day out in this industry and like i said it is so much easier than trying to reach underneath and try to hook onto a control arm and not being able to see what is going on under there when you're when you're winching this casualty out of a ditch so I'm a big fan of grabbing the wheel. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. And who wants to get dirty? Who wants to lay on their back during a snowstorm, get snow down their coat or rain, water, you know, mud, whatever. It's just, it's just a lot easier. So, um, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna show a couple methods that I like to use, you know, to each his own. But this is, these are the things that I do on a daily basis when it comes to for towing and recovery. So, here we got our green sling. It's a light duty sling. The nice thing about these slings is that they all come with tags on it that list the work and load limits depending on how you use it. Now, usually if you use it vertically, and what I mean vertically is like, let's say you hook a shackle to this, you hook it to another one, just in a straight line like that. That's usually um, the, you know, about, a, I think this one's 5,300 pounds of uh, work and load limits. Now, if you use it as a basket like this, it pretty much doubles that to 10.6. So you gotta keep, you gotta keep in mind that you, you, you know, you gotta know the way that you're using it, that you're within your work and load limits. Always understand your work and load limits on everything, whether it's your slings, your shackles, your wire ropes, your grab hooks, you have to learn what the work and load limits of those things are and like i said they're very easily marked just like this your your wire your wire rope uh is usually it usually has a tag the grab hooks usually have it stamped in there the shackles definitely have it uh, stamped in there so just make sure you're within your work and load limits so anyways say this vehicle's in a ditch and i, I want to retrieve it so one of the things i like to do is i like to just snake it through here just like that. And I'll attach my shackle here because like I said before, you don't really want to be hooking this to your grab hook because the grab hooks tend to have a little uh, seam on the throat and that there can tear this line, especially when it's under a lot of load or over time. And like I said, you don't want to have a catastrophic failure like that, especially when you got a load on it. And this here is an example of a basket. That's usually what I do. So. This would be, what the tag says, 10,600 pounds. Now, another method you can do, which does decrease the work and load limits of this, is if you were to choke it. So as you can see here, now that's choked. Now that, that knocks it down from 10.6 when it was a basket to 42.40. So you can see that that took a a significant uh, difference in the work and load limits. Now, one thing I also like to tell people is that whenever you're grabbing the wheel, be careful of the valve stem. You don't want to bust the valve stem and flatten the tire, especially if it's a TPMS. Those, uh, those sensors can be a little uh, expensive, especially for the part and reprogram reprogramming them. So just be wary of where the, uh, the uh, valve stem is. Another thing too to consider whenever you're snaking these things through the wheels is the calipers. Now a lot of the cars, you know, with the, with the big wheels and stuff and the big brakes, the calipers are pretty close to the, uh, to the spoke of the wheel. So just make sure to take into consideration that there is a possibility, depending on the angle of your wire rope, that this wheel might turn and it might jam itself up between the caliper and the rim. And you're going to have a hell of a hard time getting it out. You might even have to cut it out. So just be wary of that. Um, another thing too that I want to mention too, another way to grab these wheels 
And I use this a lot too, especially if, um, if I'm dealing with a steel wheel that doesn't have the openings like this wheel does here. They have the little holes and stuff, so you can't really snake your, your, your round sling through it. So this is a method that I like to do. Um, I actually learned this in a rec master's class. And the nice thing about this method is you could also pull on the vehicle and you could also lift. And I'm going to try and show you how to do this one. I don't know if this sling's going to be long enough. It might. It might not. If it's not, we'll just get another one. Yep. All right. I'm going to grab another sling. So just, uh, just bear with me. And we'll grab this one here. This one's a little dirty, but in other words, you kind of just hold your hands out like this. And you throw one end like that. And you throw the other end like this. And now what you're creating is you're kind of creating a basket. And the nice thing about this is this is great if you're dealing with, if you can't get the sling through the wheel, like I said before. So now you just created a basket and you can pull pretty hard on this and um, it won't come out if you have it correctly. You can pull up and you can pull towards you. So that's a good one to use. But anyways, that's all I got on ring slims, uh, rim slings and round, uh, continuous loops and round slings. And I'm hoping that these tips here can help you recover a vehicle a little bit easier, quicker and uh, and safely so anyways this is Luis again and uh, hit like and subscribe if anybody's got any questions or recommendation or tips leave it in the comments all right so one thing I wanted to add to this video as well is that bearmotion.com is actually offering a promotion on a sling kit you're gonna get two green slings six footers two yellow slings 10 footers and four shackles for 184 if you utilize the link that's in the description box it'll actually enter a promo code in at checkout and you'll get 15 bucks off that price it's a good kit to have i have one in each of one of, one of my trucks i utilize these kits day in and day out um every day in my operations and one important thing about what i love about this kit is that's all made in the usa we're not dealing with any chinese products or anything here that is made directly in this country so take advantage of the promotion. Like I said, it's in the description box uh, at the start of the video. Click it. And if anybody needs anything, uh, reach out to me. Hit me up on the comments. And thanks for watching.